Uh, welcome to Ken Talks. Uh, my book was Money by Martin Amos. Uh, the title of my presentation is Money is Garbage. Um, it starts off with uh, John Self, who's the main character, uh, living in London, and he's invited to New York by Fielding Goodney to uh, help direct a film. And um, the beginning of the book is basically dealing with all of the actors uh, having silly fights and each of their characters actually is like the opposite of who they are in real life. So it's really difficult to have, um, I guess they're not very good actors because they have difficulty uh, going into those roles and being the opposite of who they are in person. So, um, and uh, during this time in New York, John Self is, uh, it becomes clear that he is a very hedonistic person. He, um, he drinks a lot, he hires prostitutes all the time, he does drugs, he does basically everything you can imagine that he probably shouldn't do. Um, and, uh, oh, and while also in New York, uh, he's still successfully directing this movie, and, uh, the reader uh, meets a stalker of John, who for some reason despises him for being successful where he couldn't be. Like, he despises John Self for being successful because he could not be successful. And this, uh, uh, he is called Frank the Phone. And he actually interacts with John many times, but John never remembers because he's so darn drunk all the time. And, um, it also can, and that continues, and eventually uh, John heads back to London, and that's when the book goes kind of crazy, <laughs> and it turns out that I, this is sort of a spoiler, but not really, and uh, because I can't really explain it to you. Okay. Honestly, you have to read it. Like. This person doesn't actually end up existing. He never existed the whole time. And this person is actually this person who is the father of this person. But you didn't know that until just now. And this person didn't exist either. And good luck. <laughs> so, um, so basically, this book, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. It, it offers the reading really nothing. I couldn't find a reason to have wanted to read this book if I had known how it was going to play out. Like, I couldn't think of anything that it rewarded the reader with for reading it. And then, um, it is an unrewarding, as I said, a uh, rather shallow plot to me. Um, some might say ankle deep. <laughs> but, uh, and, uh, because nothing much really happens. Yeah. Um, so it seemed like the author really tried to use John Self's hedonistic lifestyle to make him a deep character, which that's not what that is. Hedonism isn't depth. That that's like, like I don't understand why he would make that. Uh, Assumption that hedon like if you're hedonistic, there's got to be some sort of deep reason because John Self didn't have any reason for it. He just kind of was drunk all the time and high all the time, and having sex all the time. It's like all right, understand why that's necessary for the book. It didn't add anything or change anything, any of his interactions. So that that just seemed like an unnecessary added element to make it seem more dynamic than it really was. And then, um, at the end, it really seemed when, when all these people suddenly didn't actually exist and people became other people and you realized that, here, I remember a specific relationship, um, when John gets to his hotel in London, the doorman is Fat Vince, that's what people call him, and then it turns out, a, like, a couple pages later, some, some odd pages later, that Fat Vince is John Self's father. And no, not actually a doorman. <laughs> it just happens. Like, there's, it seems like the plot twist at the end doesn't really have 
a reason to happen. It doesn't really, it's not really a twisted plot, it's just that the author didn't tell the reader this information until later. Like, do you kind of understand what I'm trying to say? Like, like it's not really a plot twist, it's just, oh, by the way, this is the truth and not what I told you before. Like, it's not really a plot twist. So, um, <laughs> it's not recommended for all ages. Uh, if I were to, step one for integrating it into the curriculum, don't. But if you did, um, I guess, it, it doesn't really fit in with anything else. I don't think that we've done because this year was really dark. <laughs> and like had books like um, A Clockwork Orange and uh, and it didn't it doesn't really fit anywhere in our year I don't think so I don't think it would really fit which is another reason why not to not only is it not a, I, in my opinion a very good book but it also doesn't really fit anywhere in the curriculum <clears throat> yeah. Fair